Everybody, it's Lady T. Pastor G's getting ready to join me, but it is lunchtime uplift time. Yes, it is. We're excited about today's uplift as well. It's an interesting day. We got up preparing for uh, uplift today and re and realized that our internet was totally down. Internet was totally down, and so. We had to shift to a different location to actually make this happen. But I'm here to tell you this, no matter what obstacles you come or challenges you face in the process of doing what God has told you to do, uh, make the decision to shift and keep it moving. Shift and keep it moving. <laughs> I want to let y'all know we, we actually are at a public library right now <laughs> because a couple of places we in internet was down we did not want any failure in our connection on today when we begin to speak what god has given us to speak today and we wanted to be without uh apprehension or technical difficulties now so saying i'm sharing if you will while i'm talking share uh, i want everybody i'm sharing with everybody i can share it with because i want them to be in the house today i want you to i want you to go in and share as well now let me say this let me say this let me say this because that was very that was very significant the things that I just said. You know, when we are going about doing the business of our calling, we're gonna run into challenges. There's gonna be curbs thrown at us, there's gonna be things that don't actually go the way that we had planned. Don't let that be the thing that stop you. Don't even let it uh uh make you even slow down. We were scrambling, driving over till we finally, and it ended amazing once our internet go down at home, uh, we go to the library and they said they upgrading their internet, so there's gonna be down. And so we had to scramble all over this city to find this place, to make sure we can do our assignment. And there's a blessing when you are persistent with your assignment. And so I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that we are persistent and God is uh, going to bless. now. If you have not shared, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, start sharing. Go ahead, start sharing right now. Share us, share us right now. Thank everybody for being in the house. Thank you, the uh, 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 Maze, Amaze, Maze, the Amazing, the Amaze, Michael J, uh, 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 Simone Williams. Thank you so much, Pastor Joel, uh, Terry T, Ann is in the house, Ann and Peter. What's up? Uh, Priscilla, thank you so much. For being on this podcast today, I'm gonna let you talk because I got something. Today is called your assignment. Now I talked last night about the assignment. I want to get a specific about your assignment. We have a personal assignment from God, and it is time for us to be about that assignment business because there is provision when I get in alignment with the assignment. Wherever God guides, He provides, and so that's going to be shifting in my perspectives. I'm going to know with confidence that. If God sent me there, he's going to give me what I need to to reside there. Even though it took a, 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 it took a struggle, I was in a struggle to get to where I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But uh, every struggle that I faced in route to the place that God called me built some muscles in me. I didn't like it while I was going through it, but it built muscles in me. So I'm thankful. Thank you, Pastor Deidre, for coming on in the house. So if you haven't shared me, keep on sharing. Keep on sharing. This is going to be a powerful day of revelation, we believe. We believe so. You can go ahead on because I'm. Gonna... You know, I think of it. You know, kind of like labor pains. You know, yeah. you've been you've been in this position with child yes. for these nine months. You yes. know, preparing. Everything is getting prepared. Your body. You mm -hmm. got in the room prepared. You gotten everything prepared, and now you start to have your labor pains. Yes. You're you're starting to have the pains that says that this baby is about to be birthed. What are you gonna do now? Right. You know. Then I think about even with me in this process that I'm in working uh, toward earning my PhD and I used to hear him say that all the time that I earn this I earn that I really <laughs> truly understand that this PhD that I am obtaining right now has quite 
definitely been earned. Yes. Nothing given, nothing, e it has not been easy. Yes. It has not. And when I think about it, every time I look at the challenges that I've had to go through, I mean, every challenge seems like it gets bigger and bigger and harder and harder. Mm -hmm. But then when I face it, it's like, oh my God, you brought me through that one again. Now you're just preparing me for the assignment because these big labor pains, these big, big hurdles, these big things that I've had to go through is because God is going to attach a big name to my name that will give me even more authority to do the things that he's called for me to do. Yeah. Dr. T, you yeah. mean, come on. Yeah. So it, it's been work. I'm earning it, earning it daily. So what you're saying, this process of challenge, the pains, are actually a prerequisite to access. Because mm. once you get the title, you get access. It's yes. actually given. So your your this journey, this 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 painful journey, as she said, earning this. You don't even want to have the title if you didn't earn. Yeah. Because you'll be put in positions that you didn't earn. Or mm -hmm. like David says, I know it's within my ordination to to conquer giants. Mm -hmm. But. If I were to take on the, the, the experiences of someone else that I have not actually experienced, he says to Saul, he says, I have not proved that yet. I ain't earned it. I have not earned it. So I can't be in the place of a, 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 a challenge that I suppose have the victory and not have uh, uh, proved the place that I'm supposed to be. It is foolish. Oh. That's why God, uh, when we pray for him to remove the mountain, he says, I won't. I make all grace sufficient to, to climb the mountain. In other words, there is a, a, a muscle building process in, in, yes. in climbing the mountain. And so you don't want to be in a place that uh, opportunity comes and you're not prepared. Mm -hmm. When preparation meets opportunity, That's something it. happens. Mm -hmm. So you don't want the opportunity without being prepared and definitely not be prepared and not have the opportunity. What she's saying this season of birthing, there are some of you, I want to I want to say this very clearly. I want to say this very clearly because you need to know this very clearly. In this season, as she said, of, at the door of releasing or birthing what God has promised, you already know that it's there. Uh, uh, when women are pregnant, they know that a baby there because of the movement. Mm -hmm. The movement is great. The pains are not so great, but the pains are a sign that the baby is still alive. Yes. He's still moving and kicking. The pain does not intensify or get to its greatest level until it's time for the baby to come. And so the enemy has recognition and he's recognizing that this is the season that you birthed the big one. Mm -hmm. And so the pains are intensified. I'm going to tell you that in this season of birthing, you have not experienced pain like you are going to feel in this season. But I want to say this to some of you that are listening to me. You are about to see an all-out attack from an enemy that is defeated. Mm. <laughs> I don't think they heard what I said. <laughs> you are about to see an all-out all out attack, attack from an enemy that's already defeated. Already. And so a defeated enemy will come to your house to fight. To see if you have the information that he's already, if he's already defeated. Now, your desire to engage him in a fight is a is a sign that you don't know that he's already defeated. Mm. I asked this question, and I've asked it several times. What weapons do you use to fight a defeated foe? Mm. And when people fix their hearts and mind to answer, they have problems. Mm -hmm. You don't fight a defeated foe. Not at all. You just remind the defeated foe that he's already defeated. defeated. <laughs> so reminders, reminders. You have to remind. Now, you have to remind you first before you can remind him. The problem is you haven't been reminded. The problem is, like David, since we are talking about, uh, uh, David says, I have not proved that yet. In other words, I'm going to fight this Goliath. I have been uh, uh, sanctioned by God and ordained by God to win every battle that I fight. But when I go into battle, I must be proven or prove the things that I'm going to use. Mm -hmm. But he says, I'm really literally not going to fight this giant under my own power. I'm going to tell this giant that he is defying what God has already said. The, then he says, the battle is not mine, it's the Lord. So I'm not fighting this enemy with my own power. I'm telling him what is already in place for me. If I stand in the position, even though he's he's got the, under normal circumstances, under the normal understanding of everybody that has uh, what advised me here, he's got the capabilities of winning against me. 
But I know that in the process of me getting here, mm -hmm. I have overcome several things. So I cannot forget when I get on the battlefield with Goliath, all the things that has prepared me, approved me for this time. My testimony is my greatest weapon when I come against the enemy that is trying to defeat me that is already defeated. So remind yourself that you've already won so that the enemy can hear you talking to yourself. Most people are nosy will listen to your conversation to yourself mm -hmm. so that they can plot against you. But once you remind yourself that God has already promised me the victory, how can they plot against what you already know? Mm. Most of the time, our enemy get information when we are telling ourselves that we're nothing, we can't do it, it won't happen. And so they build a, 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 uh, they build a campaign against us based on what we don't believe. Mm -hmm. We were as grasshoppers in our own sight, and so were we as they in their sight. They only think I'm a grasshopper when I tell them I'm a grasshopper. Mm -hmm. But when I tell them I'm a victor, that's the information they get. Thanks so much, Terry, for being in the house. Now, share me again because I'm going into the Pastor Joel. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, watch this. Today, I was uh, getting up, and we uh, again, we had so much challenge in trying to make sure this thing happened, but we're here. Now, I want to share what the Lord has really definitely downloaded into me. Share this with somebody. Please, there's people in transition right now. They, they, it's obligated of them to hear a word that processes their right now and not what was. Mm -hmm. They're right now. The enemy gonna bring up things from the what was because he don't get, he don't want you to get to the what is. Yes, sir. And what That's is to what come. He He's gonna bring up the what was because he don't want you to get to what he is mm -hmm. and what is to come. That's your greatest hurdle. Go back again now, now now please hear me you got to get this you got to get this because there's an opportunity that's going to be afforded you if you don't have revelation which brings discernment you're going to fight the opportunity mm. you're going to fight the opportunity you don't get to that place until you overcome the challenges the challenges are part of the strength building process that's where you are right now in the strength building process because once you get there, God's going to fully acclimate you and you're going to have enough stamina to make a long, uh, uh, enduring run in this season of your life. Now, let's get to this. Here's, here's what the Lord spoke to me very definitively and very clearly. And I do say the Lord spoke. I do say the Lord spoke and he's speaking to you. He does not speak to me unless he's given me something to speak to you. And I want to, I want to, I want to share this with you. I want to share. This is a painful season because you're birthing. The pains intensify when it's time to push out. The pain is going to intensify. But the scripture says it like this, that once the, the woman has given birth, she remembers the pain no more. Ooh. If you are done, tired of the pain, give you birth burn. so you can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say that <laughs> once again. Once again. If you're tired of the pain, give birth. Because it says once she gives birth, she remembers no more. You trying to not remember or feel the pain and, and refusing to do the work to do the birth. If you want to forget the pain, it's very simple. Give birth. Now, I always say this. I always say this. Giving a pregnant, nine-month pregnant woman a pillow, it's only a temporary relief. Maybe. You don't need a pillow. You don't need people giving you things to make you comfortable. Uh -huh. If you want to forget the pain, give birth to the dream. Because once she gives birth, she remembers the pain of more. I think the Bible, you can't even get any clearer than that. If you're done with the pain, give birth. Start living in your new life. Mm -hmm. Start living in your newness if you want to forget the pain. Now, here it is. The Lord says this. The Lord says this. He says, uh, thank you, George, for being in the house. Kevin P. We thank you, Mom, for being in the house. Now, watch this. He says, he says if you... You, he's telling me, and everyone that is under the sound of my voice. He says, if you can grasp the magnitude of God's desire to use you or to use your life. If you can just, in this season, grasp the magnitude of God's desire to use your life for his purposes, for his purposes. And seek that info. And seek that info. He'll begin to reveal, this is a revealing season, he'll begin to reveal his plan and strategy for the shift of all shifts. I'll say that again. If you can grasp the magnitude of God's desire to use your life for his purposes, now listen, for his purposes, 
he's going to begin to download the plans and strategies for this shift that he's about to shift. This is going to be a shift of epic proportion. He's looking for people right now that are ready to hear uh, uh, the magnitude of his desire to use their life. Now, this is going to be difficult because when God get ready to speak something very significant and strategic, the enemy turns up the noise. Mm -hmm. He turn up all the noise that he can turn up into your hearing. It's called distractive noises. He bring it and he comes in places in your life and in your space that are most dearest to you because he knows that if I speak there, they're going to begin listening. There are so many of you that are just about put your hand on the blessing and the enemy calls the noise in a place that is in your heart because he's trying to distract you from hearing what God says. Because once I hear what God says, once it goes into my ears, it calls the water to break and the baby comes forward and then I remember the pain no more. He does not want me to hear. And so he's trying to distract you with everything he can because you're strategic to the plan of God. He says, if you can wrap your mind around what he's trying to do, you're going to have to dig in on this one because you've been going through a couple of things and you don't think God is trying to use you. He says, if you will wrap your mind, can you, if you can grasp the magnitude of his desire to use your life for his purposes, he's going to reveal plans and strategies for the shift of all shifts. Please hear me. Now, when I when God spoke this to me, here's what he did. Here's what he did. I always like to use uh, my life experiences. The Lord reminded me of something. He, he gave me a very vivid picture. And here's the picture. Uh, he reminded me of my days in production. I, I did production about 30 years of my life. Mm -hmm. And now, when you work in production, here's what production uh, consists of. We have pro plots, we have backdrops and all those things for production. What it actually uh, uh, is, is we could go into places that look like just a box or nothing, no character, no, no attitude, and they would bring us in to give the place character and attitude. And, 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 and so what would happen, I've been on production uh, 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 teams that we would go into certain places. One, one, one comes to mind, for instance, I need, I'm, I'm making this analogy because I need you to see this. I want you nobodies to see this. One time we were called to do a production in the rural area of Mississippi. You remember me sending you these pictures of this rural area of Mississippi. Now, I have nothing against Mississippi. We got rural areas in Arkansas and everybody, every state got it. But this particular time, it's my experience. I was in the rural, one of the ruralest areas of Mississippi. And we were called there to do a production or to set up this barn. It was an old barn, decrepit looking building out in the middle of a field that nobody paid attention to. Well, there was this uh, man that owned 13 McDonald's, 13 McDonald's. His son was getting married and he wanted to do something most unusual. So he drove and picked out this old no good, decrepit barn building out in the middle of nowhere in one of the ruralest areas in Mississippi. And he hired us along with other production companies to come in and transform the building. Now we walked in ourselves when we seen the building, we had been in some buildings, but we had never been in a building like this that looked this horrible. So what did we do? We went in, we started the work. Other teams came in, they hung chandeliers in this old decrepit building. They put up walls in this old decrepit building. They put lights around the wall. We built the stage in this old decrepit building. We put up curtains in this old decrepit building. We actually transformed that building to a place that when people that was accustomed to going to concert halls were amazed at this old decrepit building. From the outside, it looked decrepit. But when you walked into it, they were almost floored. Even the, the owners of the building was floored when they seen how this old decrepit building had been transformed into this exclusive hall. Now, they hired this... I can't remember the country artist that they hired to come in to do the concert. It was so elaborate in the building that he was amazed at how elaborate this old decrepit building when his tour bus drove up and he saw it, but when he came inside, it was so amazing. And so what God showed me, he says, you went in and took an old decrepit building and turned it into an exclusive uh, concert center that people were amazed. 
And so when he showed me this, he says, I had to show you that before I told you what I was going to tell you next. Mm -hmm. And I said, what, is, what, is you, what are you telling me, Lord? And he says this to me. He says, I'm about to take people that uh, are, are discredited, that are, 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 are uh, uh, discouraged, that everybody has taken for granted, have thrown them off the beaten path. Mm -hmm. It seems as if life is no longer life for them. They just ex in existence until it's their time to go. Mm -hmm. They think they are useless. They got some leaks in that building. All right. They got some holes in their walls. Uh -huh. They've been beat and battered by the storms of life. And he says, just as you guys were able to transform that building, I'm about to transform the lives of people that people say it could never be transformed. And when I'm done with them, they are going to be presented as something that even their families are going to marvel at the transformation of God in their life. This is where we are. So God says, with his power and you connecting to his anointing, he can take his super and put it on your natural. My God. This is not something that you can do under your own power, but this is something that God is connected to you. And God specializes. Here's where his glory comes, is when he takes people that have fought battles their entire life. You've struggled with everything you can struggle with. You struggled so much that everybody knew you was in a struggle. And they say, man, when it comes to struggle, your name come up okay. under the category. Right. But God says he's going to connect to you. And he's going to put his super on your natural. And everybody that come into your space from this day forward is going to marvel. They're going to say, how could this happen? Why did this happen? And the only thing your reply is going to be is all glory to God. Because he's going to transform your life like he's never transformed it before. Now, here's what the challenge is, number one. There are things that you have applied in life that's going to have to be reapplied in life. To understand this epic, let me, epic shift. This is not a just a... Uh, uh, putting some tape over a hole mm -hmm. this season now he says in scripture he says I won't put new wine in old wine skins mm -hmm. lest the new wine burst the old wine skins I've told you this several times it wasn't him being concerned about the old wine skin it was concerned about the old oil now he says this I will not put new cloth on old cloth mm -hmm. I won't patch in other words God said this is not a season of patchwork this is a season of remake mm -hmm. For those that can allow him to go, if you don't come to God with excuses and tell him how you failed and how many times you failed, he says, if you allow me, I will remake you. And your family is going to marvel at the remake. Mm -hmm. See, So now you're going to have to reapply some things. You're going to have to see yourself differently than you've ever seen yourself before. This is going to be difficult. I'm telling you, this is not easy, but it's doable. It's difficult. But it's very doable. God is trying to epically. This is an epic shift for the life of believers. This is not just something happened. This is not your usual routine action. This is God actually outfitting you for your next run. This run is a different run than ever. This is the life run. You won't even have life until you agree to this run. Because when you see what God is trying to reveal, it's going to engage life. It's the Spirit of God, the super coming into your natural. And then it says the same Spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead is about to quicken your mortal bodies. Mm -hmm. You're about to see life. This is a transforming moment. you got to agree with this. Now, here's what one of the challenges of this is going to be of epic proportion. Here's challenge number two. A lot of people are not going to lack your shifting or your transformation. Let me go ahead on tell you. They're not going to like to shift the transformation. Why? Because you are too valuable to them in your inconsistent, not knowing who you are mm. self. Mm. They like you not knowing you. They like you coming to them to be able to be identified by them. Because if a person can give you identity, they can also give you what you're supposed to do in that identity. Mm -hmm. So this epic shift is going to be different. It's going to be so uh, incredible that, that it's going to be a challenge for you to see it and then say, God is talking to me. You won't be saved. So now you have to trust God by faith that this is him saying to you, this is your season to go. A lot of people won't like it, but that's okay. That's okay. Now, let me say it once again, because I got to, I got to, I got, I got to make you see this. This is going to put a strain on some relationships. 
This is going to put strains on relationships. This will put strain on relationship from people that you love the most. I'm going to be very clear. I'm going to be very clear. I can't leave that. This will put strains on relationships. If you are looking at me and hearing my voice right now, and you are of age, and you've been in relationship for years, but you're disappointed with where you are, here's an opportunity to shift in those relationships. Why? Because you are a product of your environment. I promise you, I promise you that scripture is truth. The scripture is truth. As a man thinketh, you are the sum total of the people that are around you. Please hear me. Please hear me. I don't care what that hustle is, it seems like they are getting. That hustle didn't work for you because you are the call of God. This is a moment of shift that's going to be strained on relationships. But if you can make the decision that I'm going with God, God will shift the right people into your life. You got to go with God's orders on your life, no matter who it offends. That's why Jesus says in scripture, tonight all will be offended in me. Mm -hmm. Offense will come. That's a part of your package because of the shifting that God is doing for you that people don't think that you're worthy or deserving of or qualified to have. They have, they just, people just get mad because they got an opinion. It's their right. People have a right to an opinion. Let them live their opinion. The only thing you don't need to get caught up on is, is letting their opinion be your reality. Mm. This will put strain on relationship. There will be many people offended in this transition. Are y'all listening to me? Many will be offended in this transition because God is shifting you into you when you've been living them or you've been living your environment. You are the first one to uh, blaze this trail of your life. You are the first one. Here's an opportunity of all opportunities. God want to do a transformation. I'm talking to somebody. God want to transform your life. That's why the enemy has caused you to see things, hear things that has diminished your faith in God because this level of transformation can only come from God. And so he's given us acceptable substitutions in our word and our belief because this is a life of faith. He wants us to believe in something that cannot produce life. The scripture says in Psalms 115, the God that made heaven and earth are the one, is the one that blesses us. He made heaven and I am blessed. It says, I am blessed of the Lord with emphasis on he made heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. Why is that significant in that passage Psalm 115? Because if you are being blessed by something that can't make a heaven and earth, be very careful because it's going to come crumbling down. That's why the enemy is trying to cause us to believe in systems and not the Jehovah God, the Jehovah Jireh, who is our provider, because he wants us to believe in something that really can't produce life. He's been diminishing your faith for quite some time with all the people that you thought was successful and they were just hood rich. Mm. Where did that come from? I just want to tell you what you did. And so you are the beginning of the brand new. And so this is why it's so difficult for you to walk into this level because you God had, God decided that you were going to be the one to be the one that introduced this. God decided that you were going to be the one. I know other people have tried to introduce it, but God says you would be. So if you're not expecting an exchange on that level, you're probably not even in the right place. Don't expect it to be mediocre. Expect it to be life changing. It's an epic shift. It's an episode. So again, let me go because I got to move on. This will put strains on relationships. <laughs> this will cause people to be offended mm -hmm. that you thought never was offended. They're going to really be and show their colors in this season. Now, let me, let, me, let me tell a story. Let me tell a story. I want to tell a story. This is interesting. So offenses will come. People will be offended whenever they think you are moving outside of their expectations of you. People will tell you who they what they think about you. Whatever you say, I'm gonna bust a move <clears throat> that might even give the the very hint that they might not be a part of the move that you're about to bust. They gonna tell you because they're trying to break you to to begin to think again where you have been thinking all the time. Because they they know that if you get enough faith to think it, God is gonna provide the resources to go there. Mm -hmm. So they'll tell you things, especially with a relationship with men and women. 
Now, women suffer more than men, I believe, of how you are nothing. It's called verbal abuse because they want you to give up on. That's not what I'm teaching them today, but I need you to see this. I need you to see. Thank you, uh, Cammy Brown. Thanks so much. Now, watch this. There'll be strain on relationships. There's a picture in scripture, and I think it's a beautiful picture. Now, Luke chapter number two. Luke chapter number two. Here's what Luke chapter number two. Now, stay with me now. Stay with me now. Here it is. Here it is. Because I always use the illustration of Jesus because I think he is the example of, of hardship, mm -hmm. being born into uh, different circumstances. Uh, you know, uh, your, your, your mom was married to your father. Uh, you, you were king, but you were born in a manger. Uh, there's a bunch of talk about your life. You, the, the, Jesus' birth was not an ideal birth. Mm -hmm. There's several of you that are listening to me right now that your birth was an ideal. Don't let the devil fight you about that any longer. We're over that idea of I didn't, uh, things wasn't perfect when I was born. So what? So what? It doesn't matter where you were born. It doesn't matter who you were born to. Thank God you were born to uh, great people. That's a good idea. But still, your resources. David was born to a good a man. Jesse, among men, he was a, a upstanding man. But David was the eighth son of, of Jesse. And so he makes a very vivid, a very uh, a definite uh, a declaration. He says, the Lord is my inheritance. Why does he make the... When you read scripture again and look at it, he says, the Lord is my inheritance. Now, now his daddy and father is a notable man. He's got a... But why did he say the Lord is my inheritance? Because perhaps with my father being a notable man with eight sons, when he get to me, the last of the eight, he might not have much resources. Mm -hmm. So I have decided that the Lord would be my inheritance. So if by chance all my brothers take everything that my daddy got, my father in heaven has got the earth and the fullness thereof. Yes. I'm still blessed. Stay with me now because this is what. So now, Jesus, uh, uh, Luke chapter 2. So now, this epic shift in your life, God is designed for you to start something. If you can wrap your mind around it, he's going to transform your life. This will put strain on relationships. So many of you are in the shift and you didn't even know it. People are falling off daily and you think they're just falling off. They're not just falling off. This is God who is the consuming fire, fire as, as scripture has said in several places. is burning off things because it's time for the birthing to happen. Mm -hmm. And so he's prepping you right now. Now, it, it works better if you agree with it. Even though it's happening, it happens in increments if you don't understand and agree. But if you agree with it, the same thing that is already happening will be a blessing to you because you agree with it. So, so now, here it is. Jesus in Luke chapter number 2. Now, here's what is interesting. Jesus has, in the, now this, he's 12 years old. 12 years old, Luke chapter 2, 12. He's intentionally. Now, listen to what I said. He had the fortitude at 12. I said fortitude at 12 to intentionally, intentionally decide not to walk with the crowd. Wow. Now watch this. 12 years old, intentionally decided not to walk with the crowd. Not to walk with the crowd. And now in his intentions, now this, this, this decision not to walk with the crowd was a decision not to walk in family tradition. Mm. Hear what I'm saying. Here, 12 years old. Now, the Bible in Luke tells the story, Luke chapter 2, that Jesus at 12 goes up to the temple mm -hmm. with his family because they had to go up to the feast every year. They, it, it was a Jewish custom. And if you were anything, you would go there. And so he goes there at 12 years old. Now, the Bible may mention the 12 because now I think 12 is supposed to be the age. We got together at 12, the age of responsibility. Mm -hmm. So at 12 years old, he makes the conscious decision that I'm done walking with the crowd, even if the crowd is by family. Now, watch what the text says. I'm going to start reading at, at uh, what, 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 39. 39. This is Luke chapter 2, verse number 39. Here's what is important. I'm trying to build some, 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 some stones to this whole picture. Now watch what it says. It says, and when they had performed all the things according to the law of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. He is born under the law. He is. And so now it was an obligation to go and perform all the things of the law of the Lord, which was sanctioned at that time. Mm -hmm. But he's about to shift because he's sent here to preach the gospel of the kingdom that will actually introduce the kingdom. And we know through scriptorial uh, study that it was the ending of a law going into the beginning of grace. All right. So he's like, listen to it because this is important. When I sing this, it's very important for you. You are going to fulfill or you are at the ending of all of the family requirements. 
<laughs> you are done with that. This is it. Now watch this. And when they had performed all the things according to law, they returned to Galilee to their own city in Nazareth. Now watch this. I want to skip down. I want to skip down to verse number 43. Verse number 43. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, Watch this. They're going back home because they had to do the obligation. This was custom and tradition mm -hmm. of the family. Here it is. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. What did he do? He made it a conscious decision and it was an intentional decision not to walk with the crowd and go back into the same old mundane thing. I'm staying behind because my life is ready to begin. And when your life get ready to begin, you're going to have to make a conscious decision that I'm not going to walk with the crowd that I'm customarily seeing with. All right. This is a shifting in my everything. And I got to make a decision. Here it is. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child, Jesus, tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph, listen to this. I need you to see this. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. Wow. The 14-year-old boy is making a decision to follow destiny, unusual, I will not walk with the crowd any longer. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to unpack this because I don't want people to take this literally because I'm giving a spiritual meaning here. A child at 12 years old is supposed to obey his parents. Don't get this twisted. We're talking about spiritual things here. We're talking about spiritual things here. Jesus is now ready to do the work of his calling, and he had to make a decision, a young decision, that I won't follow in the crowd. Yeah. Now, for those of you that are new in Christ, you 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 are not old. God is calling you around right now. You're gonna have to make a decision that I won't continue in law and customs because what God has given me and my ordination is so different. Mm -hmm. That's the spiritual meaning. So he decided. Now 44 verse said, now no, no. Joseph and his mother knew not of it. Watch this. There are some things that God is going to prompt in your spirit. I got to say that. That your spiritual fathers won't even know where God has planted you. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know life is live that if people don't tell you how to go, where to go, when to go, you sit down My and don't God. go. My God. But that's not this season. Now watch this. 44 verse says, but they supposing him to be in the company. Watch this. They suppose it. By tradition, mm -hmm. he would be traveling with this company. Yeah. He will be doing what we do. Watch this. By, by, but they suppose that he had been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinfolk and acquaintances. Ain't that interesting? Every time we go to find Jesus, listen to me very clearly, where do we search for him at? Amongst our kinfolk wow. and acquaintances. This is a shifting season. This call that comes from the Christ that's in you won't be found amongst the familiar crowd. This is a shift season. This shift. You are the first one to introduce this, even though everybody in your family seems like they have more, they, they got more, but God has given you to make the shift. You're gonna to have to have enough water to do it. Now, 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 now. It says, and they, they, they suppose him to be have been in the company when a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinfolk and acquaintances. Forty fifth verse. Forty fifth verse says, and when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him where in the temple. That's a, a, a preaching point there. If you want to find Jesus, we taught on last night, forsaken not the assembly of yourself together. What you get in this season is going to be predicated on God's direction on your life. He says, forsaken not tell me. When I'm looking at pleasant Psalm 132, for brethren and dwell together in you. When we're searching for Jesus, the one that saves our life, he says, I'm going to send him back to church. Mm. I'm sending them back to you. Now I just lost half of my crowd, but that's okay. It says, came back three days, they found him in the what? temple sitting in the midst of doctors both hearing them and asking them questions. God had just shifted his crowd. Why? Because he's about to shift where he sends them. 
First step to walking into this destiny on this level is God shifting your crowd. Remember, Jesus made a conscious decision, a definitive decision that I'm not walking with the same crowd. God is ready to catapult me into my new, so he shifts my crowd. You can have people tell you that they're brand new in their life, but if you see the same people coming in and out of their life, it is short-lived. Yes, sir. Because the first step that God does when he shifts your life, he shifts your crowd. Mm -hmm. And then he move, removes the people that have held you in complacency and send people into your life that is going to catapult you into your destiny. He removes the people that have held you and allowed you to be complacent. And he brings people into your space that have got to show you and teach you how to walk in your destiny. Listen yes. to that again. You catch that. Now watch this. 47 verse says, And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. Now watch this. This is very important that you catch this revelation. 46 verse says, When they came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing and asking them questions. He was not teaching the class. He was asking questions and answering the questions that they posed him, right? Now watch this. The 47th verse said, and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. Watch this. All that heard him, who went back to hear him? His family members. They are astonished at his answers because we never heard you say that at home. Okay. <laughs> well, at home, I was never challenged on this level. So you never required of me to show you what was in me. You told me to stay in my place. Mm -hmm. And now that you're finding me in the place of my destiny, God has already anointed me to answer there. <laughs> God has already uh, uh, provided me with the answers of the place of my destiny. For those of you that are scared and you say, in, in this place where everybody take me for granted, I don't say nothing and don't get, don't get a chance to say nothing. He says, I'm going to shift your crowd. I'm going to put you in the presence of people that are already where you're trying to go. And everybody that come and find you, they're going to be astonished, uh, really astonished at your ability, at your ability to abide in that crowd and intermingle with people that are on the level that you're trying to go through. Somebody needs to hear that. Now, I need to move on because the 48th verse said, and when they saw him, they were amazed. Listen, this, watch this. When they saw him, they seen him outside of what they were accustomed to seeing him in. That's what it made. If you would make one conscious decision to stay back from the, the complacent, uh, uh, crowd, the comfortable crowd, people will be amazed at the move you made because they're going to see the exchange that you're making in your new season. One definitive decision will change how people see it. I need you to hear me very clearly. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us, thou risk? This will put strains on relationship. I already said it. This definitive, excuse me, move from God to shift the crowd, to stay back from the crowd. Everybody's not going to get this. Mm -hmm. Everybody's not going to get this. Everybody's not going to get this. This is a word called cognitive dissonance, right? People are hear things and they think they heard what you're saying mm -hmm. and they haven't heard anything. They are t taking this and putting it into the reservoir of their old revelation and the enemy has convinced them you're already there. You are already there. Please hear me today under the power of this anointing. It says, and when they saw him, they were amazed. And the mother said unto him, son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Now, what she's looking at the physical, you're 12 years old. You made a decision to not follow the crowd, the family crowd. Why have you done this to us? There's a strain on relationships that's going to come. There's going to be people offended. They're going to be close. Listen to me. There are going to be close people that are offended that God has just gave you an opportunity to walk in the destiny and you took it. You took the opportunity to walk in that. Now watch this. He said, why? She said, why have you dealt with us? Uh, dealt with us. Behold, thou father and I. Watch this. Thou father and I have sought thee sorrowing. We didn't know where you were. We are accustomed to knowing where you are. We can put our finger on you when you yeah. want. But this move has caused us not to know you. Mm. I'm amazed at what I'm hearing from you and what I see out of you. Who this is the move. And so I'm offended. Who, who are you? <laughs> this move that God has prompted in your season is going to cause the closest people to you to not recognize who you are. Ooh, hey. They are not going to recognize this person. Who is this person? It's, you are actually the person that you've been waiting your whole life to be. Mm -hmm. They've seen you in another light, but now that God is about to elevate you. Now, the 49th verse says, and he said unto them, here's what I was really going after. Here's what I'm going 
And he says unto them, who's he talking to? He's talking to Mary and Joseph. Mm -hmm. Now, because the text says, Joseph and his mother goes back to look for him, find him in the temple amongst the doctors. God has shifted his crowd. Now he's answering questions, not teaching, but answering. Interesting, because they didn't know. They were marveling at his answers. They had never seen him in this company. Mm -hmm. He was just answering from a family tradition. But since God was ready to shift, then he's shifting into the new crowd. Now he's answering on that level. If you would ever go there, God would give you what to say when you get there. Oh 49th verse says, and he said unto them, because they said, I'm sorry, you dealt with us wrong. You didn't tell us this was happening. Now, here's what the reply was, and we're talking in spiritual terms. Here's his reply. Uh, this is the 49th verse of chapter 2, Luke chapter 2. It says, and he said unto them, how is it that ye salt me? <laughs> so you listen. Now, he says, why is it? He's, he's telling his mom that has searched for him. A whole three days, and now she's finding him. And his first answer to her after her telling him this has a, 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 a cause of sorrow, he says, "Why have you sought me?" Listen to it. He says, "How is it that ye sought me? Wist it not that I must be about my father's business?" Listen, listen. Now, now here's Jesus who has made a definitive decision not to follow the crowd. Mm -hmm. His mother and father have searched for him in the crowd. Mm -hmm. Here's what his reply is. Why did you seek me in the crowd? Mm. <laughs> I had shifted from the crowd. I can't believe you're still trying to look for me in the places that I left. Mm. I'm sorry you think that, that this is an offense against you. you. I'm sorry that you think that I went against your will. No. Now watch what he says. Why, why, watch what it says. Wish ye not that I must be about my what? Father's business. Father's business. Now imagine this. Imagine this. Imagine Joseph standing there. Joseph standing there. Uh -huh. Joseph standing there thinking to himself, how in the world is this boy that I have fed his entire life standing there telling me that I'm not his real dad? Come on. <laughs> how in the world can he stand here? He says, he says, why have you sought for me amongst tradition? Why are you seeking for me amongst the regular crowd? I was never, I was not sent here to mingle. I was just there for a time. Mm -hmm. Watch what he says. He says, I've got to be about my father's business, not my family business. Mm, not the carpenter. Not the carpenter's son. When you saw me outside of the context of a carpenter, you marveled. When you heard me speak the language that wasn't carpenter's language, you marveled at what I was saying. Mm -hmm. I was just waiting for the right opportunity for me to get around the proper crowd. Why are you still seeking me amongst the crowd that I left? And now he says, will stop not. In other words, this should have been a spiritual download that God has shifted me into my new. Mm -hmm. And he's telling Joseph, you are not my real daddy. Now, God might have allowed you to be in my life for a certain period of time, but when the time came, you should have known from the declaration of the angel that he was going to shift me. And I've got to be about my real daddy's business. Mm. I've got to do what my real daddy said. There's several of you right now. you got people that call you son or daughter. But there's a day that you're about to say, I hear what you said. You're seeking me in the wrong place. I have moved from that resident. Now I have moved into the place that I got to hear what my real father says. Mm. Because he is the one that sent me here to be about his business. And now is the time that I am about the real business of my creation. You've been seeking me amongst the wrong crowd. Mm -hmm. Here's what the Lord says. We have got to be very careful of the assassins that call us on. Mm. We've got to be very careful in this season because one of the plots of the enemy is cause this, this spiritual father thing to stunt the growth of those that are sent to be now. Mm. That's why Jesus had to make a definitive reply to Mary and Joseph. I love y'all with the love that I'm supposed to love you. But there is a higher calling on my life. Now, we're speaking in spiritual terms because there are assassins that will call you son. Mm -hmm. These assassins are so brutal. Here's what they do. There is an assassin's creed. What does that mean? One assassin will call another assassin and say, shut this person down because they are not walking with the crowd any longer. Mm -hmm. 
They are not walking with the crowd any longer. This is why Jesus made a very uh, unusual statement to his disciples. Watch what he said. He says, he says in Matthew 10, 37, watch what he says, watch what he says. He says, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Listen, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy worthy of me. Now, this is not an indictment against biological families. Mm -hmm. This is not an indictment against biological family. Hear me. This is not an indictment. A family, biologically, is a blessing to you. Amen. But there comes a day when God is going to pull you outside the acceptable thinking of even your family because he's got a greater calling on your life and he desires for you to call it. So Jesus is not uh, uh, placing an indictment against families. He's placing a warning. <laughs> Why is he saying, if any man love his father and mother more than me, he's not worthy of me? He's saying in spiritual terms that that is the place that you hear voices that would defy your calling. That's why he tells Abraham, Genesis chapter 12, if you don't leave your father, your kindred, your country, when I download something in you that requires faith, you're going to have the voices in your ear telling you that I don't want you to hurt yourself. Yeah. Don't get yourself in yeah. over your head. And when you listen to the voices that you respect and honor, it can talk you out of what God is trying to give you. Yeah. And you don't know that God is trying to shift you into greater levels of living. And if you ever go there, God will acclimate you to there. He'll grace you to live there. Mm -hmm. The enemy is trying to talk you out of it. And he always uses familiar voices. So here it is. Jesus 12, 12, year old, 12, year old, 12 years old, make a definitive decision that he's going to go after destiny. Now remember, a 12-year-old child in the physical, on the natural uh, uh, terms, you are not to do this. We are speaking in spiritual terms. There are many of you that are babes in Christ, that are brand new, and you are hearing God download into you something that is different than what you have been uh, uh, living by or heard your entire yeah. life. And he's a gift. And it's going to be difficult because it puts strain on relationships. It puts strain on relationships. When you decide, I got to do what God said. Now, when I say family, that is even a, a more broader term, even because there's some we got family members in other areas we call family, job, family, uh, social family. Anytime you try to make a definitive move and you go after the unusual, unique call of God on your life, there are family people that are offended because they are accustomed to you. you are. That's why Jesus says. Why did you seek me? Why seek you after me there? Mm -hmm. In other words, will thou not? In other words, that God was shifting me, I thought you should have got the download too. You should have recognized that God had shifted me. Remember, the angel told you when I came here that I was different than all the other people. Why you keep trying to put me in that same box? Mm -hmm. My calling is to be different. For the last few minutes of this, I need to talk to somebody. This is your season to answer that call. Remember, 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 if you can wrap your mind around the magnitude of God's desire to use your life for his, for his purposes, for his purposes, and seek that information, take the, take the, been through, uh, a look like I'm going to be going through, and say, I'm going to ask God what he wants. Mm -hmm. If we can wrap our mind around that, he's going to download plans and strategies. Next move. Now remember, I told you the story of my days in, uh, in production, how we could transform what seemed meant to be nothing into something epic that people would uh, marvel at. We to go into buildings as, with no character and put character inside the building. This is what God is trying to do with people today that's been uh, taken for granted, thrown to the side. Uh, you're living in obscurity. He's trying to come to you. And what he's trying to do is trying to come to you and say, I want to present something to you that you thought had been lost in the struggle. I want to give you your life. You thought your life was lost in the struggle. 
but he's trying to give you your life again. And this is going to be a transformation season of your life of epic proportion. He can and he will if you will agree. God did two things for me. What is it? Permission and participation. He never goes against your will. And so for those of you that are sitting right here, my voice today, today, today. Today is your day to make a definitive decision that I'm not walking in the crowd any longer. I'm going to find the crowd that is going to give me strategic information to move into my next level. As Jesus did, 12 years old, stood back, definitive decision. I'm not going to walk with the crowd. I'm going to go back to the place where I can find the people that are not living where I am. They're living where I'm, where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. I got to get with people that are already where I'm trying to go. Now, that is very offensive. That is very offensive because there are people that like you like you are. They want you to stay. Why? Because you are very, 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 very beneficial to their program. To their program. <laughs> and they want their program to keep running as is. Exactly. And God wants you to move to your next level. This is the assignment on your life. What is the assignment? First step. God, what is it that you desire? I know what I'm doing. What is it that you desire for me now? You've got to ask God and then allow him to answer. Don't ask him an answer for you. You know how upset you can get when you ask, ask somebody a question and then they answer. Why are you ask me if you're going to answer? Don't answer God. For God, ask him, what is it? Just do the inventory. Just scrutinize, just in case. Now, he might say you're good. But leave room for him to say, there's something else that I desire for you. That's great. That's greater. I desire greater for you. And don't be afraid when he says there's greater. When you look at your life and say, I don't have the resources. I don't know how. Don't worry about that. Wherever God guides he always provides. He will give you the necessary resources to do everything that he desires for you to do. This is a season like none other. This is an epic shift that is trying to take place in your life. That's why the pain level is ex excruciating. Mm -hmm. Because the pain is more intense when the woman is about to give birth. But the scripture says that once she gives birth... She remembers the pain no more. If you are done with the pain and you're trying to throw it in the sea of forgetfulness, the scripture says that the only way that happens is that you give birth. Hmm. If you're not interested in giving birth, you are saying, I still desire the pain. Hmm. <laughs> if you are not willing to give the birth, you are saying, I want to remember the pain. I'll say it again. So the scripture says that when she gives birth, what it says, she remembers the pain no more. Are y'all still here with me? That is a simple, simple, simple uh, antidote to the pain. Give birth. <laughs> Give birth. Give birth. If you want the pain to be gone, you want to forget about the painful situation, Give birth. Earth. Birth out what God is trying to give you, what God has already given you. Birth it out. Let it happen. 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 Let God do in you what he's always desired to do in you. And watch. Watch. This next season, this next season is the season of birth giving. Mm -hmm. This next season of your life is the season that you're going to give birth to the authentic the authentic, the authentic you. Let me read that. Let me read that. That's, uh, let me read John chapter 16, verse number 21. Let's read it. And then we're out of here. It says, a woman, when she is in travail, had sorrow. Listen, sorrow. You're in travail, yes, sorrow, because her hour is come. The sorrow in travail is because there's an hour that has come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembers no more the anguish for the joy that a man is born into the world. If you are done with the sorrow and travail, give birth. <laughs> give birth. That's your assignment. Your assignment is to give birth. Give birth. All right.
I am so excited. Let's pray together today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you right now for this word. We thank you for the blessing of those that are hearing this word and applying this word and the new life that is going to produce. They are going to walk out of the crowd or they're going to stand back from the crowd. Thank you so much, Lord, for actually giving us an opportunity. This is the actual season. It's going to happen. Thank you for it happening in the season. And when I was praying about that, I heard something that your your desire and the definitive move of, of, of as Jesus did, staying back from the crowd, that's the very thing that's going to get you noticed. Mm. You'll never be noticed as long as you keep walking the amongst the crowd. The very fact that you held back you're going to be noticed. Thank you so much. Now, 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 thank you guys so much. Um, Friday, remember, uh, Lunch Time Uplift, we will be live on radio. Friday, 103.3, 105.5. And if you're in the Little Rock area, you can tune in live on radio. Uh, Little Rock's Gospel Experience. That's Friday, uh, Friday Uplift. Also, Friday night, Friday night, Girl Talk. At Network of Believers, you don't, you do not want to miss this girl talk at Network of Believers, eleven eleven West Seventh Street, eleven eleven West Seventh Street. Doors open at six o'clock. Doors open at six o'clock. It's going to be an incredible night of healing, uh, revealing. Man, it's going to be such an incredible night. You, if you are a lady, you do not want to miss this. Find a babysitting for your children because you don't want to be, uh, what is it, interrupted in this session. It, it, I'm telling you, you do not want to be interrupted and said no men are allowed in the house. It's for women only. I'm endorsing it because, man, you got strong women in your church. You got a strong church. Yes, and so this is the season that God is healing because the women especially, it's for you. You're going to get birth in this season. So we're thankful for that. Saturday night is our youth explosion. Same time, 6, 6 p.m., same location, 1111 West 7th Street. Pastor Charles Anderson and the crew, they're going to put together on that night we're going to have. Now, everybody's invited out to that. Parents, you can come. If you grow and say, I just want to show up, come on to the house. We're celebrating our children and we're watching. Watch this. We are setting a platform, giving a platform, just like Jesus. As long as he was amongst that regular crowd, they didn't know who he was. But when he was given the opportunity, mm -hmm. they seen something in him that they marveled over. Yeah. I believe Saturday night with this opportunity, our children are going to marvel us. They're going to say, and we're going to see them in a different light. So we're excited. And then Sunday, Sunday at 1 p.m., same location, 1111 West 7th Street, is our eighth appreciation. We're definitely inviting everybody out to that. Our speaker for that Sunday is Bishop Fred Harris of Life Abundant Church. This is going to be a powerful message. It's going to be a power day, powerful day of worship and celebration. Everybody's invited. Bring everybody that you know, your grandma, your grandma, your grandpa, your grandpa, your grandpa your everybody. Bring them into the house. We are very, very excited about this time of celebration. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. All the time and all the time. It's two times that God is especially good. Can I share them with you? Come on. That's day and night. Yeah. He's especially <laughs> he's especially good in those times. So live in life. For those of you that want to uh, sow into this word, if the word was a blessing to you, here's an opportunity. Here's an opportunity. You can do so by going to Cash App N O B C. Cash App N O B C. Put that in. Cash App N O B C. Uh, and and also also let me let me let me put something else in there as well as well. Let's see where where is it at. I hope my my connection it looked like, look like the connection was kind of messed up. Was it messed up? Mm -hmm. It seemed like it was messed up. I don't think so. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much. Here's another uh, cash out address. Thank you. All right. All right. We're so grateful. Again, believe God. Watch God work. He's doing a great thing in your life. It don't look like it right now, but it takes some time to get acclimated to that level of blessings, what God is trying to introduce in your life. So get ready for it. Allow it to happen and watch it happen. And can't 
nothing stop it because God said it. Pastor J. Lady T. We are out of here. Thank you so much. I'm turning us off. I'm turning us off. Thank you so much. Thank Friday you. Friday night. Friday night.